You've all heard me say it a thousand times before. One of the most important jobs that you have as a Rust server owner is building up your community. Using your Discord is obviously the easiest and probably the freest way for you to start building your community. But one of the most important aspects of your Discord in order for it to be successful is having a system in place where your players can come to your Discord and report errors with your server, problems with the plugin, a suspect player, a suspect situation, whatever. They need somewhere centralized where they can go to let you know that there's something going on that needs your attention. My personal suggestion is that you have some sort of a support ticketing system built into your Discord that allows you to keep track of all of those different situations. And right now, I'm gonna show you the one that I suggest. What's up everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel I do plug interviews and tutorials, plus I want to give you all of the tips and tools that are going to make your Rust server ownership so much easier. If you're brand new to my channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on and to get the latest updates on the Rust development world. I'll remind you a couple of times throughout the video to hit that like button if you're enjoying what you're watching, so please remember to do so. Alright, let's get on to today's video. The simple ticket bot is exactly that. It's simple, it's easy to set it up, and if you decide that you want to have this on your Discord server, you can have it done in just a matter of minutes. So there's just a couple of important things that we have to make a note of before we can actually start playing around with this tool. First of all, this bot is not hosted anywhere. So once you purchase this bot for $19.99 from codefling.com, link in the video description down below, you'll have to actually host this bot. Now there are ways that you can host a Discord bot on your local network if that's what you decided to do. But what I suggest you do is hit up one of the actual Discord hosts. And as you can see here on the documentation page for Simple Ticket Bot, Codefling has actually put a warning right on the page there that says this bot needs to be hosted somewhere, here's where we suggest to go. So if you click on this blue bar, it'll take you to serverstarter.host where you can select one of those hosted bots. My suggestion of course is you go to icehost.com, you go into their bot hosting section, and you can pick up a hosted Discord bot from a company that actually supports my channel and what I'm doing. One thing you'll notice when you download this file is that it actually comes with two zipped files. One if you're going to run this bot on a Linux system, and one if you're going to run it on a Windows system. And obviously because I'm using a Linux system, I will be using that Linux Linux file. However, if you're hosting this on your home network, which is probably running Windows, you would obviously use the other one. But the process is going to look exactly the same. Once you've uploaded the zip folder into your Discord bot, you obviously want to extract that to this location, and then we can actually go back and delete that original zipped file. These are all of the files that you need to run your Discord bot. However, there is a little bit of work that we need to do to the configuration file before we can actually fire this bot up. So let's open up config.json, and this is where we're going to do all of our work before we can fire up our bot for the very first time. So one thing that you might notice the very first time you open up this config file is it might feel a little bit overwhelming. It's actually not that bad if you go through it step by step. And it's important to know that Amino has set up the bot so that it comes with three pre-configured buttons. So what I found helpful the very first time I was going through this configuration file is actually finding where those buttons are and minimizing them so that I don't have to actually see all of that information and I can just deal with things as I go along. So scroll down through the configuration file till you get to the ticket settings and I want you to hit on this arrow button right here. So what this is going to do is it's going to minimize this entire section that has to do with this cheater report button. And then we can do the same thing for the payment support button. And of course, we can obviously do the same thing with the ban appeal button. Again, all of these are just pre-configured buttons and you of course can go through and change them. They don't actually have to be that functionality. You can change the functionality of them. And we're gonna go through that in just a couple of minutes. The point of that whole exercise was to minimize all of the stuff that we don't need to deal with right away so that it shrinks down this configuration file to about 50 lines. In fact, it's exactly 50 lines, which is a whole lot easier to deal with. All right, so let's go up to the top and let's get started. So the very first thing that you're going to see on your configuration file is the fact that you need a bot token ID as well as a bot client ID. Now I've broken that video out into a separate one. It's going to be in the top right hand corner right now. So follow along that video step by step. It's going to get you all of the information you need to carry on with this section of this video. So you have to make sure you come back to this video after you're done watching that video. So as you can see, because I followed along all of those steps, I currently have this bot tutorial guy in my Discord server offline right now because he's currently not doing anything. But we do need to retrieve the information from that bot to put into our config file so that we can get this bot online and actually doing something. So we're going to go back to the Discord developer portal. We're going to click on reset token and we're going to click on the copy button and take this information over to our config just like that. Now we also need our bot client ID, which is in general information. And then we just need this 
application ID right here. We can click on copy, take that and pasta that back in there. The next thing we need is the Steam API key. Now each individual person has their own Steam API key. By the time you see this video, this should be pre-populated with the URL that you need to go to to get your Steam API key. Now, obviously I already have my Steam API key, so I'm gonna enter that in there and then I'm gonna do my very best to make sure that you guys don't see it. And I'll use this opportunity to tell you that once you actually have your Steam API key, do not share that information with anybody ever for any reason. Even if I called you up right now and said, I need your Steam API key, don't give it to me. Next thing we need is the actual Discord server ID. So we right click on the top left hand corner, the name of the server, and we can just click on copy ID. If copy ID doesn't show up for you when you right click on something, that means you're not in developer mode within Discord. So to do that, click on the gear icon next to your name, scroll down, click on advanced, and toggle this on right here where it says developer mode. Once you have that turned on, anytime you right click on something, you should have the ability to copy the ID. Now with all of that information on our configuration file, we should in theory be able to save this file and turn on our bot and make sure that everything is working correctly. And as expected, I was able to save that file, click on the start button on my dashboard, and now my bot is up and running. All right, so now that we have our bot all up and running and we know that everything is functioning exactly the way that it should be, it's time to actually go in and start customizing this ticket bot so that it actually fits for our gaming community. But allow me to ask you if I've earned your subscription today. Are you subscribed to the channel yet? Do you have those notification bells turned on? And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. All right, so first off, we have to define who in our Discord server are we going to allow to have specific accesses to this bot. There's a stats command that's built into the bot. So we need to determine if we're gonna grant access to a specific role to run that stats command. There's also the ability to ban people from being able to submit tickets. If you want a specific role within your server to be able to prevent people from submitting tickets, and of course you need to define that role right here. And of course to find those role IDs, let's go into our Discord server settings and click on roles and find the role that we want to grant access to being able to do all of these commands. So I just quickly created a support ticket staff right here. We're gonna right click on that again and we're gonna copy ID. Go back over to our config file and just posted that ID in that location. If you have multiple IDs, obviously you would keep going on and you can add more and more IDs there. Roles allowed to prevent people from being able to submit tickets. We can do the same thing here. Maybe you don't necessarily want your moderators or your support ticket staff to be able to ban people from submitting tickets. Then you would just leave that the way it was before. And then only the owner or the admin of the Discord would be able to perform those tasks because they have all of the perms no matter what. We can manually control the bot status. So what their actual online status is plus what it actually says down below their name. We can actually control the action, playing, streaming, listening, watching. By by default, this is set to watching. And then of course we can change what it says after that. So right now it says watching tickets. We can change that to whatever we want, watching SRT bulls, YouTube videos, whatever you want. Here's where we get to decide if the ticket bot is actually going to be utilizing battle metrics information. If you're familiar with battle metrics, you know how valuable that information is. So I would suggest you get into it if you're not already. And if you are familiar with it, then you're going to know exactly what you need to do here. Again, with this battle metrics token, though, by the time you see this video, this should be pre-populated with the URL that you need to go to to get your battle metrics token. Again, I'm going to put my battle metrics token in there as well as my org ID. And then I'm going to scroll down so that hopefully you don't ever see that information. If you're using any kind of linking system, whether that be Steam Cord, Simple Link, or Platform Sync, you can define that information here. If you're not using any type of linking system, of course, change this to false, and then it won't rely on any of that information. And then the last thing that we need to set up is what the actual panel is going to look like. And I know you haven't actually seen that yet because I haven't shown it to you. But here we get to define all of the information that's going to reside on the panel that will be in the channel where we get to express all of the information to the people that come in there to submit a ticket. Now you're you're going to notice that everything in this bot is pre-populated with rust mania information obviously you're going to want to go in there and change all of that rust mania information so that it reflects your gaming community instead of aminos and if you're familiar with discord embeds most of this is going to look very familiar to you you get to customize what the embed is going to look like you can change the colors you can change the image that it actually uses i'm just going to continue using the one that amino has actually supplied with the bot but you can change it up to whatever you want if you are going to be using a new image for your embed obviously you would change this url right here to reflect your URL. This next line is really important though, roles that are allowed to send the panel. And now again, I know that I haven't shown you the panel yet. I'm gonna do that right after we go over this section right here, but who do you actually want to be able to send the panel to the Discord server? Typically speaking, you would only need to send it one time. That's of course, after you've set everything up and it actually looks the way that you want it to be, you would only have to send it one time. You 
you shouldn't have to resend it ever again. However, during this process, you will be making changes to the configuration file, shutting down your bot, restarting it, and then you'll have to resend the panel in order to make sure that whatever changes you just made to the config file actually are taking effect on the bot. You're gonna end up doing that a bunch of times. So if it's not gonna be yourself as the actual Discord owner, it would have to be somebody that you trust and you would put that role ID in here. So if we head back over to my Discord and click on my profile, you can see that I have the owner role granted to me. I'm just gonna right click on that and copy that ID and put that role ID right there. So let's save this configuration file. And because we made changes to the config, we actually need to stop and restart this bot. And we'll just make sure everything boots up correctly again. Yep, it says that the bot is online. Now we can go to the Discord and I'll show you what this panel is all about. So over at our Discord, we go down into whatever channel it is that we wanna actually send this panel to. We click on slash and then we click on the bot that we've created for this server. And we wanna use this command right here, slash send panel. And then it's gonna ask us which channel we wanna send this to. And in my case, I'm gonna send it to a channel called MT. You might send it to a channel called support tickets or whatever works for your server. And there we go. This is what the panel that I keep referring to looks like. So we've got a cheater report, brings that up. We've got a payment support, brings that up. And then we've got a ban appeal. If you've got a player that's been banned from one of your servers, they can come here, click on ban appeal. They can make their case. And then you get to decide whether you're gonna actually remove their ban or whatever. If they make a good enough argument, which they probably won't. Okay, let's go back to our configuration file and let's say we wanted to change how some of these buttons look. And if you remember from the beginning of the video, I actually minimized all of these buttons. So that's what these three lines right here are that don't look like anything right now. But as soon as we click on this arrow right next to it, it's going to expand it all out. And this is the information that's dealing with each individual button. We can change the emoji that appears on the button. We can change the title that goes on the button. We can change all of the questions that are asked on that box that popped up. It's important to know that you can only have 45 Five characters in each one of these questions. As soon as you go over that 45, it's actually going to break the bot. So if you click on one of your buttons after you've made changes in here and you realize that it doesn't actually work, I think it says the bot is thinking forever and ever and ever. And then you come back to your bot console and realize that it's actually crashed as a result of that. In going through the preparation for this video, I did find that. I changed a bunch of these questions. I didn't know that there was a 45 character limit. And of course I broke my bot. We can break up all of the submitted tickets into their own category and their own channel, obviously, which is going to be helpful. You would define that information here so we can define the category right here and then we can define which channel that ticket actually goes into. Now, I inadvertently made that sound like it was optional, like you had a choice whether you could define a category and a channel for these tickets to go into. This is not optional, you have to do this part. So as you can see in my test discord here, we've got this support tickets category right here, and you can copy this ID, transfer that back over to the config file, and then you can have an individual channel for each different type of ticket if you want to, or you can just have all of the tickets go to the same channel. So like in this case right here, I have a cheater report channel, you would also have like a payment issue channel or a ban appeal channel if you wanted to or you can just reuse these two IDs on the other two buttons which don't get covered in this video because they look exactly the same they just have different wording if this part of the video is not absolutely clear make sure you let me know in the comment section down below so that I can respond and let people know what I'm actually trying to get across to you Next, we get into the ticket permissions. So do you want to require that a Discord member actually has a specific role before they can actually submit a ticket? Sometimes a lot of Discord servers will have a, like a verification system before you can actually enter the main part of the Discord. That's typically like a membership or a verified role. There's some sort of a role that you have to get before you actually get access to the full Discord server. You may want to put that role in here. Therefore, you can't have people coming from outside that aren't verified on your Discord server submitting a bunch of tickets that are completely meaningless. So in my case, I do actually have a member role where they have to go through a verification process in order to be a member on my Discord server. So I would put that role right here. Do you want to allow players to be able to close their own tickets, true or false? By default, this is set to false. I would suggest that you leave it at false. Do you require the user to be linked? So that linking system that we talked about a couple of minutes ago using Steam Cord, you can make it so that they actually have to have their Rust game or their Steam ID directly linked to your Discord. And you would use one of those three linking systems that we talked about earlier. Right now I'm going to change that to false because I'm not going to require any type of linking for this demonstration. And then we have to define some staff roles so who can actually respond and report on these different tickets and who can actually close them. We would want to define those roles here. So moderator level, in my case I have an owner level so I would probably add that here. And then once a ticket is submitted, do we want to actually mention one of those roles in order to grab somebody's attention right away that somebody submitted a ticket? If you do want that, if you want a specific role mentioned, 
mentioned, you would put that role in this section right here. You can have pre-built response messages or canned messages, depending on what you're used to them being called. But if you're finding that you have a bunch of specific tickets that you're always responding the same way to, you can have a pre-canned message that you just click on and it responds that and you don't have to rewrite it each time. And as far as I know, you can add as many of these pre-canned messages as you want. By default, it comes with two. And all you'd have to do is copy pasta this section right here and you can put in as many pre-canned messages as you want. As far as I know, it's as many as you want. So I just posted that over like 10 times. If there's a problem with this, the bot's gonna tell us. The next section here, we get to decide what the actual ticket embed is gonna look like once a player has actually submitted one. Again, same thing as before. This is all pre-populated with all Rust Mania information. Make sure you change that to reflect your game community. Right away, we've got two different options, whether the player is linked or if the player is not linked, because it will appear differently if you decide to. And then of course we get to determine what the embed is gonna look like once the ticket has been closed. Same thing, go through, change all of the Rust Mania stuff so that it actually reflects your community. You can think of this section as more of like a promotional thing so that all of this information and all of these links are gonna be displayed to that player once their ticket has been closed. And then the very last thing that we get to do here is we get to decide which buttons are actually gonna be available inside that ticket once it's been submitted. You're gonna see exactly what I mean here in just a second. So if you wanna change the text on it or if you wanna change the icon that's associated with it whatever you want you can customize what these buttons look like but let's go have a look right now so you can see exactly what i'm talking about so this is what i'm talking about after a player has actually submitted a report this is exactly what they're going to see and this is what your support staff is also going to see so they can actually see the responses to those questions and then the available buttons that we were just talking about a second ago is close resolved non-issue profile and then of course you're sent a transcript of what the resolution of that ticket was okay so something interesting there you remember a couple of minutes ago when i said that you could have as many pre-canned messages as you want apparently that's not true i don't know what the actual number is but i was actually breaking my bot and i didn't realize it. I had to actually go back through and remove all of those copy pastas that I put in there. Maybe if I had actually made them so they weren't all exactly the same or something like that, but I don't know that for sure. I'm hoping Amina will let me know. And then this is the response that the person that actually submitted the ticket gets sent directly to their DM. So, so they'll get a transcript of all of the information that they submitted at the very beginning. And then of course they've got direct access to those URLs that I was just showing you a minute ago. Basically the promotional section of this ticket where you can direct them to wherever you want them to go when they're done with all of this. So that last section that we were just going over all of those variables for, that was only for one of the buttons. Obviously there's two more by default that you would have to go in and configure. And like I've said a couple of times throughout the video, you wanna take out all of the Rust Mania stuff and put in the name of your gaming community. So just to be clear, I only went over one of those buttons, you have to do the other two as well. You're gonna be going through a testing process anyways as you're setting up this bot. You're gonna make a couple of changes to your config file, you're gonna save it, you're gonna restart your bot, and you're gonna make sure that those changes are actually taking effect. You're obviously going to realize that, I just wanted to have it said anyways. All right, so as you can see, Simple Ticket Bot is very simple. It might seem complicated in that we have a lot of different steps that we have to do to actually make it work. And like I've said a couple of times throughout the video, I'm hoping that Amino puts in all of those URLs so that you can just click on that button and it'll take you exactly where you need to go to get all of your different APIs, setting up your Discord bot, which I showed you in that external video. I want this to be as simple as humanly possible, even for people that have never set up a Discord bot before. So for right now, if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. And if you want to check out another far more extensive bot that Amino has also built, check out this video on the left hand side of your screen right now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that button right over there. And if you want to support what I'm doing at Rust Admin Academy, make sure you click on that Patreon button right down below me.